Uh, good morning. So, a uh, couple of things. Um, float fabrication. Um, in case anybody's wondering how, uh, how do we get the floats assembled? How do we make them flat, square? Well, uh, I may have talked about another video, and I may not have, but um, the key the key component is the cutouts in the, in the sides of the floats. They have to be deep enough uh, to allow um, the strut really to um, to lay flat. And so it means, that, as I say, it's a it's a deeper downward uh, cut, about twice the thickness of the strut. You want the struts to be long enough that they make contact with the center keel. So these are actually um, about three eighths of an inch longer uh, past the edge of the float and go right and butt right against the keel on both sides, obviously. Uh, and then, well, how do we get them to lay flat? And I've seen people make jigs and try to create a situation where everything's locked in place, but really, all you need to do is this. Uh, the floats are, are flat down their length, so you've already got them flat. And then next you just need to make them square, and that's where the shipwright cross, or just the, the right angle that I draw on my desk, desktop, uh, comes into play. So you're going to center one of the floats, make this a 90 degree angle, and Right, so we've got our 90 straight line, consistent. All right, and uh, and then away you go. You've got flat, square, float assembly. And once that's done, and these are secured, and uh, I always start with a. Uh, uh, wood glue so that I have a bit of room to to maneuver and, and manipulate the, the floats uh, until they are flat and square and then once that tightens up I get a, a little uh, run around with the um, medium CYA adhesive to lock it all down and then um, I add the cardstock uh, plates. Essentially, these are reinforcement uh, aluminum plates that go around the struts on the real version uh, of the uh, float assembly. So we just replicate that with cardstock. See how those are cut out? I don't know if you can see that, but anyway, that's and that's a flat square float assembly. Nice. And we can see that our floats will probably stand, our plane's going to stand roughly this high uh, off of the floats. I went ahead and cut a piece of 16 strip stock uh, to the length I think I want it to be. Our attachment point is the rear of these two points, is where the main landing gear comes. And so we're going to actually attach, I'll drill holes here and here to accept our, our struts at the airframe. And we actually have two struts coming uh, from this attachment point. Uh, this is an end strut here. Bing, bang, boom. So, um, but this is roughly our length. This is our standoff for the airplane over the float. It's, I don't know if that, if that looks good from this angle. I don't know. But that's roughly the height we want. So we just now, uh, we need to cut, I need to cut the two more uh, lengths of strip stock at the determinant uh, lengths for each of the three struts and then I'll cut piano wire and bend it and as we did with the uh, wing struts for the steerman uh, this will be the length of the straight run, uh, straight section of our piano wire and then off each end will be about a quarter of an inch maybe maybe less um, maybe an eighth of an inch only of a bend that will go into the drilled holes in the side of the fuselage 
right? And at the bottom, we'll just extend straight down about a half inch. And what that does is give it gives me a bit of play um, with the floats to get the floats square to the airplane, if you follow me. We'll, we'll go through that when I when I do the assembly. And then all we do is we'll drill the corresponding holes in the in the floats. And again, because our wire uh, it's just a, uh, virtually a straight shot down. Uh, that gives us a bit of room with the floats to be able to uh, to get them to get the airplane square. So the top connections again will be will be fixed because those will be um, 90 degree um, holes that are drilled into the side of the airframe. So that wire is going to is going to lock in place there. But down here we'll be able to do some sliding. If you, if you follow me. A little bit of sliding because of the way the wire will be bent and because it's just dropping into the holes that we'll have drilled in the top of our floats. And in that way we'll be able to get side to side adjustment, forward and backward adjustment and so forth. Uh, just because of that flexibility in inherent in that design. So there you go. That'll be float assembly. Uh, as you can see I've uh, assembled the tail. Now we still have to do some uh, filling and polishing. But this is essentially our um, our tail assembly. This is our bottom uh, strake. This adds uh, rudder and vertical fin authority. Well, again, if I talked about that in another uh, video, I may have, I may not have I may not have posted that video because there was a lot of dialogue in there and a lot of uh, air traffic overhead here. And so I may have just deleted that video entirely. I wasn't happy with it. But at any rate, um, on the uh, float-equipped aircraft, um, one of the things that tends to happen is with all this dangling under the airplane is that a pilot can lose rudder authority because of all this surface area that runs uh, with the vertical uh, surface area into the wind. And so to regain some of that uh, vertical fin surface area, uh, a lower strake is typically added to the fuselage in varying sizes and shapes and configuration, but uh, but uh, always added. They always this is this is a, t a t this is a typical application for any float equipped aircraft. You'll see uh, an appendage usually attached here of some size, and then also you may see smaller. Um, I, I don't have anything cut to shape, but uh, little, um, not winglets, but uh, just vertical surface area enhancements that go into the tail and stick up, you know, maybe a foot or so scale scale height uh, above and below. Um, the leading edge of the uh, rear stabilizer, uh, horizontal stabilizer. So I'll, I'll probably be adding those uh, features too, also to the airplane. Um, uh, here's our rudder. Uh, so that'll just be attached after the fact. I'm going to paint this. Uh, it may get a checkerboard uh, paint design on it. I'm I'm not 100% sure I'm going to do that scheme, but it may get that. That's why I left it and, and cut it off. One of the reasons I cut it off. I was also going to cut the uh, horizontal, the elevators uh, free and, and reattach them, uh, but decided against that since uh, I won't be needing to paint them separately or do I won't be doing anything to the, in the finish. So I just decided not to do that step. Um, we still have to add a fillet here uh, along each side of the uh, vertical stabilizer. There's going to be some uh, um, spackle added and then shaped to replicate a fillet. Uh, so that needs to occur. That's probably the next step here. Um, probably even before I start working on the float uh, struts, attachment struts to the air, airframe, I'll probably do the fillet next. And then I still need to, as I said, I need to fill and apply more spackle and do more sanding on the tail, but that'll be part of the fillet work. I'll just blend it all together into that process there. So. Um, Anyway, this is our, our project where it stands as of right now. Uh, we're starting to look like an airplane. 
I won't begin uh, fabricating the wings just yet. I, as I say, I want to do these other steps first. Uh, I pretty much want to get both of these features, the fuselage as it sits and and the floats, uh, all the way to, through paint prep and ready for paint. And I'll probably assemble, you know, frame up the wings and, and infill them and begin that sanding process um, before I paint the airplane and the floats. I just want to get them all, th all the way through paint prep, uh, probably including the primer coats, get the primer coats on them just to make sure that they're ready uh, for paint. And then, uh, and then I'll, I'll, I'll do the wing fabrication and uh, infill. And again, the, the wings, the airplane is going to be completed, assembled and painted um, prior to attaching the wings. The wings will be attached in their final, uh, they'll be fully finished and painted when I attach them to the airplane. Um, there is a, a, a wing fillet that goes across that top seam. It's cardstock. It's a very thin element. It's a uh, you know sheet aluminum on the actual aircraft. It's very small. Uh, has a, a slight fillet here at the back, a little feature here at the back, um, and it's about one scale foot in width. So for our purpose, it's about a quarter of an inch, uh, and it'll lay across this seam, and that will finish that off. So, in other words, normally when I attach the upper wings, um, there's some filler and sanding and and that seam is eliminated um, because it's visible but in this case that that's not happening um, so I can completely finish and paint the wings prior to attaching them. The other step we're going to do is um, the the wing root uh, rib, the rib that establishes the, the, the edge of the wing that, that attaches to the airframe. When I pull those off of the sheet I'm going to lay them on here Right, fit them per so that that's a uh, flush fitting. Actually, I'll, I might leave it a little high because we have to sand into the wing a little bit to get uh, to get it shaped and, and filled. So I'll probably put it a little bit proud here, maybe a one thirty second of an inch proud across the top here. And I'll be drilling two small holes and inserting a couple of um, hardwood, either hardwood toothpick uh, as dowels, or I may use some of that. Uh, that brass tubing, um, but that's so that when I go to attach the wings, I don't have to do any fiddling around. I'll just insert them into the pre-drilled holes, um, and that we should have a we should have a good fit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing that now. The, the holes in in here will be I'll hollow them out a little. I'll hog them out just a little bit so I have a bit of play, depending on how the wings end up as they're sanded, so that I can have a little bit of adjustment. But the holes into the wing, those will be, that's where the dowels will actually be glued in. So that'll be fixed. Uh, and then we'll just insert the wing, a little bit of uh, the wood glue, manipulate that into a, a fair and square position, and let that uh, begin to cure. And then once I have everything fair and square uh, with, the, with regard to the wings, uh, then I'll finish tacking it in with the uh, CYA along the underside edge. Anyway, that's the plan. Again, there's a sorry, there's a lot of air traffic here this morning. So. Um, yeah, so as I say, this is a progress report only. Um, I should have more uh, production uh, style video uh, of the uh, assembly and the, and the uh, paint prep processes as we go forward, but. I just wanted to um, put up a video showing where we where we stand right now, and and this is this is that. All right, later.